Hi, subscribers. I'm Stephen Lieb, and I'm coming to you with a message for real-world investing. I believe that we are really at a crossroads in this country. We are facing greater threats in a way than we've probably faced in the last hundred years, even counting the World War I and World War II, which did not threaten our hegemony as a major world power. The threats are coming from the East. There's a massive shift of power from West to East. And that indeed is the mission and the message of real world investing. You have to be aware of it in order to do something about it. Fortunately, some of the old rules of investing will still apply. Where there's incredible risk, there's also gonna be incredible opportunity. Just to give you a feel for what we're dealing with in real world investing, we're focusing on basically three major areas. Security, and this includes cybersecurity, defense, the whole package. If you look at where we stand relative to China, you, you're going to be shaking your heads. After you've read a couple of real world investing uh, issues, you're not going to believe it, but it's all true. I come to you very much as a reporter, not some sort of uh, Cassandra shouting from the rooftops, take your good bag, take, take your canned goods and head for the hills. No. This is stuff that you can find and document all on the internet from very, very credible sources. In cybersecurity, for example, China is way ahead of us, way ahead of us. And the reason they're way ahead of us is that they focus on it and they focus on the best of the best when they're very, very young. As an example of how China goes and performs intellectually, just look at the chess world. I mean, you're not going to find out who the best cyber hackers are. That's just a secret. But chess is not a secret. It's an intellectual activity. In very short period of time, China has emerged as the number one chess power in the world. Intellectual activity, China has dominated and come from nowhere to domination within the last 15 years. They have planes shifting gears. They have planes. When I wrote my book in 2011 and was published in 2012, if I had claimed that China, China would have a stealth fighter that would match our best stealth fighters by mid-decade, everyone would have laughed at me. In fact, they probably would have had people in white coats carrying me out. But they do. And it just continues to go on and on. You can protect yourself. And that's one of the messages of this publication. Another area which we almost completely overlook, is commodity scarcity. Now, I know you're going to tell me, well, oil's down to 40 or $50. And yeah, that's true. Copper's not really done very much. I mean, this year it's gone up a little bit. I feel that these commodities are going to go up a lot. But forget about that. Forget about that for a second. When you look at scarce commodities like graphite, like heavy rare earths, like germanium, what you find is that China dominates these scarce commodities, which are critical to modern civilization. One story I just have to mention to you. I mean, it, 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 when I read this, I didn't believe it. An editorial or an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal about 18 months ago commenting that we had finally solved our rare earth problem. And everybody, including me in my 2011 book, 2012 book, whatever, talked about scarcity of rare earths and how China had dominated, dominates rare earths, which are critical. They're, you can't uh, develop permanent magnets. You're going to have a hard time with many defense uh, 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 gadgets if you don't have heavy rare earths and access to them. You're not going to be able to, you know, there's so much of the world that revolves around heavy rare earths because permanent magnets are a free source of electricity. It's that simple. The article that I saw in the op-ed page of the Wall Street Journal said, we've solved our problems. The Defense Department has partnered with an American company, and we are going to now get rare earths from this company. And I said, thank goodness. I'm so happy about that. I did a little bit more research, and I actually found the white paper that was written about this partnership. The company in question, I wish I were making this up, was a company called Molycore. What happened to Molycore? It's broken and busted today. No Molycore. And the reason is they did not have heavy rarers. 
are, had very, very few of them. They had a lot of non-heavy rare earths, which are not that scarce, and they had no supply chain. So whatever they had, whatever ore they had, they had to actually ship it to China in order to get it processed. This is the kind of craziness we're seeing in this country today. And you have to be prepared and you have to protect yourself. One area which we're going to talk a lot about and another major threat to America is the status of our dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe that our dollar is not going to be the world's major reserve currency as a result of all the other factors, but rather will be not necessarily replaced by the yuan, which is the Chinese currency, but will be replaced by a yuan-backed currency by backing, and the backing will be precious metals, probably gold. China's on record. They are on record as saying gold is part of the Chinese dream. That comes from a translation of uh, the, the chief person in China in charge of gold, the man that reports to the highest levels of the Chinese. China, unlike America, encourages their citizens to buy gold. They also mine gold, and the government does, at a loss. They not only talk the talk, they walk the walk when it comes to gold and other precious metals. Estimates, and I'll say here, there, these are estimates and to some extent speculative, is that China is accumulating about 2,500 tons of gold a year, a year. That's an extraordinary amount. It's about what the world mines in a year. Now, China's not alone, of course. The rest of the East also loves gold. It's a, only a matter of time before we are be, before we are faced with a situation we where our ask, this one of the most disgraceful things that I've read is that Americans have a hundred trillion dollars in assets. Less than one percent of those assets are probably precious metals and gold. In China, the number is probably closer to seven, eight, or ten percent. It's a matter of time, and maybe not that much time before China says our yuan, along with the Russian ruble, along with maybe a couple of other currencies, hopefully the dollar, will be backed by gold. And this will not be a gold standard. In the gold standard, gold prices are fixed. This will be a flexible standard which will allow gold to rise. I think gold can go as high as $10,000 or $20,000 in the next 10 years. And I think gold miners, which I'm very familiar with, I mean, I've actually been underground 2,000 feet, you know, looking at some of these mines. I didn't understand everything I saw, but I, I, I've been there, and I know the people that play the game and play it the best. Gold miners, if gold goes up tenfold, these miners, some of them could go up 40 or 50-fold. This is just history. But this is going to be part of how you must protect yourself. And I use the word must advisedly. If you're going to get through what I think is going to be the most turbulent time Domestically, okay, I'm not talking about uh, uh, military uh, combat soldiers who go out there and risk and sometimes lose their lives. I'm talking about common people and the anger that they are now feeling is going to be multiplied many times and it should already be multiplied. I mean, what, what, what was the sense in not telling people, for if you go to a financial planner today, they won't tell you to buy gold. They'll tell you to ignore it. Yet gold has been the best performing asset over the last 16 years by a mile, by a mile. Since China's entered the scene, nothing has touched gold as a, as a performing asset. Yes, there was a big correction in gold, including that. Gold has been the best. And I would be furious as a citizen of this country, and I am furious as a citizen of this country, that there aren't uh, certified financial planners telling everybody that comes into their shop, buy gold. Instead, you get penalized as a financial planner if you tell anybody to buy gold. Uh, we're here in real world to correct this, to give you a chance in what is likely to be the most, I would say, again, most threatening time, economic time that you're going to face in your lifetime. And I hope that we can do what we set out to do. We welcome you all, if welcome is the right word, but we do think that this publication will become must-reading for everybody that does subscribe. Thank you very much.